We've just concluded a very difficult week for our state and our country. John McCain was an American hero, and we were very blessed to have him as our senator. We're all aware of the size of the void John McCain leaves. Our prayers and our heart remain with Cindy McCain and the entire McCain family, and we will continue to celebrate the life of John McCain. I want to start off by saying that we all hoped today would never come, but it has come. I realize what an important decision this is and that there is no replacing Senator John McCain. But the law requires me to do it, and the people of Arizona deserve representation in the U.S. Senate. It's a decision that I made with careful and thoughtful deliberation. As you can imagine, I received a lot of advice from people about this selection, most of it unsolicited. However, the best piece of advice that I received from was, was from another governor who said, just do the right thing. Pick the best possible person, regardless of politics. It was really good advice and clarifying advice, and it made my job easy. As I contemplated who could best serve our state in the US Senate, I kept coming back to one name and one person, John Kyle. There is no one in Arizona with the stature of Senator John Kyle. He is a man without comparable peer. With nearly two decades experience in the Senate, serving alongside John McCain, Senator Kyle is prepared to hit the ground running. Over the last few months, Senator Kyle has been working closely with the White House on the Senate confirmation of President Donald Trump's nominee to the U.S. Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh. Now, Senator Kyle can cast a vote for Kavanaugh's confirmation. Senator Kyle is a beacon of integrity, highly regarded by people on both sides of the aisle, and able to work across party lines to get results. There's a reason he was considered one of the best senators in the country. It's because he was. He's an expert on the matters facing Arizona, water, land use, and issues facing our Native American communities. I want someone who can enter and lead on those conversations. For those reasons, I've asked Senator John Kyle to step forward once again in a spirit of service to aid our state and serve in the seat vacated by Arizona's most beloved adopted son, John McCain. People automatically assume that this appointment will serve through 2020. I haven't been able to get that assurance from Senator Kyle yet. What I have gotten is a commitment to serve Arizona through at least this session of Congress, and it's my hope that he serves longer. There's far too much work before the Senate, work that is important and consequential to our state and our nation, work that demands immediate attention. It's not the time for newcomers and now is not the time for on-the-job training. Arizona needs someone who can hit the ground running on day one, and that's John Kyle. The fact is, every single day that John Kyle represents Arizona in the United States Senate is a day when our state is being well served. At the memorial here in the state capitol last week, Senator Kyle spoke of how Senator McCain always put the interests of Arizona and America before all else. Senator Kyle has done the same throughout his own service to our state and nation and will do so again. 
Lastly, I want to thank Carol Kyle. She's been so kind and giving and selfless, and we so sincerely appreciate her. Thank you, Carol. No question, these are difficult circumstances, but we are blessed to have the leadership and statesmanship of John Kyle as we come together and move forward. Thank you. Good morning. I am grateful for Governor Ducey's confidence in me and honored to accept this appointment. We're all saddened by the circumstances that required the appointment and appreciate that there was only one John McCain. John and I served the people of Arizona together for nearly 20 years. And in that spirit, along with Senator Flake, I will do my best to assure that Arizonans continue to be well represented in the U.S. Senate. The governor asked me to serve for the remainder of the term, and he's made some very convincing points. I've committed to serving at least through the second session of the 115th Congress. I do know I will not seek this seat in 2020 nor any other uh, office in the future. I'm accepting this appointment to fill the seat vacated by the passing of my dear friend because of my sense of duty to the state I love and the institution of the Senate in which I served for 18 years, and because the governor asked for my help, and because I'm putting my country first, just as this seat's previous occupant did every single day for more than 30 years. For now, there is much unfinished business on the Senate's calendar, including confirmation of President Trump's nominees to judicial and executive branch positions. I look forward to going to Washington and getting to work.